Hi, I'm Mark Clagorn. Welcome to the Photographer Academy and today we're talking speed light photography again and we're talking about the basic setup for strobosonic or strobe effect. Um, now, I'm going to be demonstrating kind of how do you set it up on the, wi uh, the wireless, but basically uh, we can do it with a uh, flash on camera in exactly the same way. It'll just get a different effect, okay? Let's talk about, first of all, what strobe is. Um, if you've ever been to a disco in your life and basically where the room goes black and all of a sudden those white lights start pulsing, and you can, everybody looks like they're in a robot kind of drug infused land. We're basically in strobe mode. Um, so uh, we can get that same effect uh, within the photographic studio by using the strobosonic kind of technique. It's not just set for speed light. In fact, you can do it with studio flash or some high end studio flash um, as well. Basically what we're gonna be telling it to do is set a certain amount of strobes with a certain amount of power in a certain amount of time, okay? And then basically it's gonna record, so if we set it on 10, it's gonna record 10 different flashes in the set time, or five, or four, whatever you wanna set that as and things really. Okay, so uh, it could be used for creativity with the likes of dancers, for food photography, drop-in, or, you know, lots of different ways for you to do it. But um, again, it's, it's a technique that is kind of used by some, but not by all. Right, so um, basically if we were to kind of just look onto the back of the speed light itself to begin with and we switch pretty much any model on uh, and then we can see that it's already in a multi-mode here. But if I just scroll through the mode levels, you'll usually find that um, when you turn a speed light on for the first time, it's gonna be in TTL mode, ETTL or ITTL. Basically what that means is intelligent through the lens kind of uh, metering, uh, evaluative metering, they all mean pretty much the same thing. When you press mode next, it's gonna go into a manual and this is where we can kind of set the different powers ourselves to be an exact expo exposure, everything down from a 128th power right the way up to the one to one power. This basically will give the full output of the flash itself. Then we press the mode button again and this is where we're in the multi-mode. This is the strobe sonic, okay? So we've got basically the power setting, then we've got the hertz, and then we've got the multiples that it's gonna be doing. And most of you are gonna be kind of work, working in something like a, a 5, 10, 10, 10, 20, 10, whatever, whatever it is. But the main thing is the power of the flash, once we've basically acknowledged what it's gonna be, you're gonna find that the flash itself, it's gonna not be able to recharge its capacitor enough, e e even with a supplementary battery on the side. So be careful, you don't wanna actually try and do too much with a little speed light itself, but you're gonna set a combination of all three of these up to get to the different set of uh, the settings. Remember the, uh, the Hertz and the multiple and the power. Okay, so if I was then gonna take a photograph and I was gonna set this, as I said, let me just set it in the different hertz. Let's go seven, we'll go 10 flashes, and we'll go into 128th of a second, just so I'm basically not gonna exhaust the flash, okay? And um, from within here now, I'm gonna to have to set a shutter speed that is gonna allow for us to see all of that duration of those flashes, because obviously it's gonna recharge itself. And then it's simply pointing it towards your subject and taking the photograph. And then you'll see that strobe effect as it kind of comes through. And if we've got something moving in front of the camera, basically it will record a different step of the, move, of the movement with it. Um, obviously the black of the room, the more effect it's gonna have and things really. So that's the simple way to do it. Then we would probably want to uh, look at a little bit more of advanced way, especially if we've got multiple flashes. And then we're either gonna work with the likes of a flash, which is gonna be on camera hot shoe, and this is gonna be, be the master or command, uh, commander. In other words, it's gonna tell other flashes of a similar brand and a similar type to actually be able to do the controls. So in other words, this is gonna tell these ones to actually act as a strobe, as long as they're linked together, uh, together in some way, and it's gonna be able to control the power and everything else with it. So we could work either with this as the master, or in this case, on camera, uh, we've basically got a controller or a master commander, as it were. So by kind of, um, let's just switch this off first, and then we'll switch it back on again. 
And you can see in a similar way, we've got ETTL on the top first of all. This is naturally in master mode, no matter what. Then we uh, want to work our way through the mode and just to get to the multi, all right? Now, when I'm in a multi here, you can see already it's kind of saying all of the flashes when they're linked together. It's not linked to anything a minute because the little uh, light up here is red, as you can see yeah, there. And um, what I need to do is obviously be able to control each of the different flashes in a different power, or I need to be able to set them all the same. So obviously it's a little bit of experimentation with this particular controller. If I move through to the menu two, then I click into ratio. At this stage, I can select group. I can then click on the group that I want to adjust and I can change its power, okay? Then all I'm gonna do is basically return out of it and I'm basically gonna be ready to shoot in a multi-mode. If I then was to switch this light on, this flash on, okay, um, what we do now is um, because uh, this is already in a slave mode, all right, uh, at some stage, these are gonna link. Can you just see how this one went to green now on the top, which basically means it's linked and we can see that it's green on here as well, okay? So this one is now linked to this one and this one is going to tell this one what to do. <laughs> it's as simple as that. That's why it's called a commander or a master, and this is what is called a slave. Um, I try and use the analogy about kids in the playground uh, as far as flashes are concerned. Some flashes uh, are naturally designed to play together. Other flashes are not designed to play together, so they'll kind of have their own little gangs out there and things really. But at the end of the day, we're always going to have somebody up here like the headmaster who's going to be telling all the other little kind of people uh, to actually kind of work and so on with it. So uh, in this way, uh, just as I set up the other flash on camera before, um, we can have all these kind of controls. So um, basically, I'm, I'm ready to fire. So if I just uh, took the photograph now, this is the one that's going to fire. Uh, if you didn't see that fully, let me just turn it towards you just for one minute so you can kind of see it fire. Remember, this is telling it how many flashes, what the kind of the power of the flash is going to be, and uh, the kind of how many is going to fire during a duration. So in other words, we do it again. You can see, I'm not sure how that is showing up on camera, but you kind of get the effect with it. A multiple burst of flash anyway. So um, if we kind of uh, don't have the likes of a master, but we have two strobes, um, basically all we've got to do now is set it up in exactly the same way. So if I just take that master off for a minute and I get a similar flash. Um, to basically itself, let me just uh, tilt, tilt this up for you. So basically now we've got a flash instead of a master. Okay, the difference between these two is obviously, you can see pretty much they're identical as far as the screens are concerned. The only difference being is that this one has a flash um, on it, whereas the master doesn't, of course. So in the same way, uh, switch on the camera. And now we're going to uh, switch on the flash itself. Now, um, this is in a multi-mode, as you can see for a minute, um, but it's not connected to anything. We haven't actually set the connection up. Um, and basically, if I kind of just take the shot, if this is in multi-mode, like we set up to begin with, it's going to kind of fire. But in this case, it's only in the Hertz one. It's only going to take one shot and everything else with it. But the first thing I want to do is actually make this the master, yes? So if I press this double lightning bolt, I'm coming into the kind of the master and commander mode. At this stage, straight away, uh, if it had been set on... The, the off, whoops, there. I just need to turn it, in this case, into the, wire, uh, the wireless when I'm using the similar kind of flashes together. Or if uh, this particular model allows me to work with different flash types and kind of allow them all to communicate together. But in this case, I want this one to be the master. So um, as far as the link, it's now happened. We can see the green has come to it, which is good. Uh, and now really what I want to do is basically uh, set up the multi part. So it's how many do I want it to fire? In this case, I want it to be five. Yes. 
and then we want the Hertz, let's run five as well. Uh, but as you can see in this particular model, there's no instant way to get to the adjustment of the power. So I just move into group two, uh, sorry, into menu two, into ratio, and basically we're gonna be working then on A's and B's and so on with it. So in this case, um, we can go in and press the group. That one was A, so I can just press to that one, turn its power up and down. That signal passes through to the slave now, okay? It passes through to this one. So this one is now telling this one exactly what it wants to behave like, okay? Once we set our power here now, all we've got to do, it's going to act like a, a commander. It's going to tell this flash to fire. So if I turn this around to you, you can see it again. So in this case, it's going to fire five times within the second. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. In the same way, if I wanted to adjust the uh, amounts, let's come back into the menu models again. So I just click into the multi-mode, dial this up. Let's go to 10 now. And now when I take the photograph, I can't count them. <laughs> okay, that's the kind of the, uh, the speed that it's going in. And obviously if I do the Hertz now and I increase that to the same level, you can see it's giving a lot more pulses for each one to kind of record the different effects as it goes across the screen. So as far as the, stro uh, the Strobosonic is concerned, it can either be done with flash on camera or we can turn that flash into a master like we just did, or we can use the likes of the little controller to replace a flash as such, really. If, if you're just getting going with your uh, speed light photography, um, probably the best investment to get going with is uh, two speed lights, pretty much exactly the same. These are the Yongnu 600 EXRT2s for Canon. Okay, these are a pair. In fact, they're a, trip, a, a, a triptych, as, as it were. And then basically, when I add this into the mix, it means that I've got three flashes that can do three different things because I can set them into different groups. Look, um, Strobosonic's a bit of fun. If nothing else, learn how to set it up. And remember, the most important thing that you need to do with all flashes is besides to drop them, uh, remember, the most important things that we need to do to flashes is what? Know how to press and clear everything because you did all the settings wrong. In this case, it's the two double buttons in the middle. <laughs> anyway, I'm Mark Claiborne. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.